well, let's just make a basic tween, or let's say a classic tween. I'm just going to create a shape and a symbol here on the stage. Doesn't matter what it is. And I'm going to convert it to a symbol. Now, the, if you remember anything I say in the next hour, it's when it comes to the difference between the tweens, the difference is that the classic way of tweening is frame-based, and the new way of tweening is object-based. And they're two totally different things, and there's good reason for both, and there's good reason why Adobe uh, gave us this new motion model. Uh, but again, it all depends on how you use Flash and why you're animating and what you're animating as to what tween you want to use. And in some cases, it's clear-cut. I'm going to use this tween over this tween for X reason, but there's some instances where you will actually end up maybe even combining both tweens in one animation. So as we all know, the true and tried method of animating using the old style is always working in the timeline, creating keyframes, and then applying what is now called a classic tween. Anything pre-CS4, it's just going to say create motion tween. That's the confusing part because since CS4, and it continues in CS5, create motion tween refers to the new method of tweening that I'll get into in a minute. Um, so create classic tween will create a timeline animation for us, although we haven't done anything to this, so I'm going to go to the last frame and just move it. And as we know, tweens interpolate uh, this property over time, which is obviously a position property. Obviously, we can scale, we can skew, and we can tint to different colors. Let's pick something a little better than that. All right, and there's your basic tween. You can create keyframes sort of mid-tween or mid-span. Uh, mid All right, so very basic stuff. Now, what the reason why Adobe gave us the new motion tween is because what we have a hard time doing here is let's say all of a sudden you have, I don't know, hundreds of frames of animation, a lot, a lot of tweening going on, maybe even across layers. The one thing that is difficult using this tween model is the fact that the, these keyframes and this tween applies to all different properties. So it's really hard to, let's say, you or the client says, oh, we need this whole entire animation to fade out from, from, say, frame one to the last frame, whatever that may be. You don't have individual control over the alpha property or the scale property or the skewing or the tint. So it would be really hard to calculate manually how much alpha percentage would be, let's say, at frame 10, you know, especially the longer your animations get. Um, but there's another reason why animators don't use the new motion tween so much is because we rely heavily on nested animation. Anyone use the IK tool at all? Yeah, anybody struggle with it? Yeah, it's, it's promising, in it, but it's not quite there yet, and it's taking a long time to get there. I remember um, speaking at a uh, Macromedia Max conference down in um, New Orleans, and this was Flash 5, I think, or Flash 6 and talking about how I, I will hinge. Um, by editing the center of a symbol, you can sort of hinge. Let me actually open up something here while I'm talking about it. Let me see what this is. All right, here's just a basic example of an arm. I have a whole bunch of hands, right? And all these hands are nested here. Just like mouths, I like to almost nest everything between hands and arms and eyes and it's just, makes for uh, a more manageable file. Um, we'll sort of simulate IK before we had IK by uh, the default for the center point of a symbol is always in the middle. But you, grabbing the free transform tool and then moving that point here allows that arm to rotate where it would naturally. OK, so here's actually, let me go back quickly for a minute to the classic tween versus the new motion model tween. Here's another ad disadvantage or advantage, depending on what you're doing. Um, here, in, you know, motion tweens are kind of dumb in the sense that they just interpolate position in a straight line, no matter what. And as animators know, 
nothing really moves in a perfectly straight line, especially when you're dealing with the human anatomy and form. Everything moves in an arc. So if I wanted to do a basic motion like this, and then let's say deselect the, the upper arm, so we can bend it there, and then maybe add a little rotation for the hand. Now let's go here and create a classic tween. You'll notice about midway through, everything just starts to break because this, let's say for example, the hand is literally moving in a straight line from that position to that position. It should be going in an arc, but it literally goes in a straight line and therefore you can see how it's overlapping the arm in a very unnatural way. And in the past, what, we had, what we'd have to do to combat that is to create a guide layer and then assign that layer to a guide and then literally draw a guide. Let's see. There's the center point and then snap it there and then go here. It can be kind of a problem as you can see. Whoops. But then we can at least make a guide and so we can, as you can see, it's not perfect and I can manipulate it to make it perfect, but uh, it can get kind of challenging. I'd have to create another guide layer for the forearm and do the same thing and repeat it. Now, if let's remove that tween, whoops. And we can get rid of that guide. Let's create a motion tween. This is the new motion tween. Oh, let's make sure that's aligned. I'm right clicking over the object now. And let's select everything. Free transform tool. I'm going to temporarily position that center point here. Because the spline path shows up for each object, Oops. We have no need to make guide layers. It's just a little bit easier to finesse this to make all your animations work on an arc. Now, that's fine if you're n if you have no need in uh for controlling any of the nested animations. That's the one stipulation regarding that technique. So, that's why I wish someday, hopefully, Adobe, and I think they can and hopefully will. Um, at first, when they introduced the new motion tween, they didn't understand exactly how animators were using Flash. Um, but now they are starting to realize. Uh, I think it's, it's taken a while for them to understand some of our workflows. And now they're realizing that um, you know, it would be neat to in be able to integrate both of the uh, technologies and what these two tweens uh, have to offer into one massive tween. Uh, I think it would be probably beneficial to everyone, especially people who are new to Flash. See, again, here I wouldn't be able to, let's say, select this and then have it switch to a completely different frame because it would update the entire span since it's object-based and not frame-based. So that's the one drawback. And as long as you know that going into it, then you can sort of plan for it. And um, so that's the main difference between these two spans.